What is going on, you guys? It's your boy, the Tex-Mex Next Tech Billionaire here. <laughs> and we're back with uh, episode 25 of the video game therapy series. Yeah, I recorded this one earlier, actually. And I, um, I guess my OBS must have reset or something because I didn't record my audio at all. So it was an entire hour of me um, just silently running around playing the game. So that was, I'm sure, very entertaining. I actually uploaded it and uh, didn't realize until I actually, um, somebody commented and told me that there was no audio. So um, yeah, hopefully for seeing this, this one has audio and you can hear me. So um, yeah, anyway, um, episode 25. Yeah, it's been a, been a couple days I've been busy. So go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, shit happens. But uh yeah, anyway, got a, got a bunch of stuff on my list here, so it could should be an interesting uh interesting one. Hopefully I don't run out of shit to say to talk about. So um anyway, the the first thing I think is funny. I generally don't like uh covering like I suppose for lack of a better word, just like mainstream topics. So I generally don't like talking about the, you know, the news and shit like that, just because those tend to be issues that, I mean, it's kind of sounds stupid that people care about. Uh, and the more that people care about certain issues, they tend to have stronger opinions on things. And I generally like to to stay out of the out of trouble. But I, I would I do think it's funny, and I want to touch on this uh, the whole metaverse thing, and not really specifically about the market conditions of Meta as a company and you know, my opinion on their long-term feasibility or leadership or whatever. I really just want to talk a little bit about the, the metaverse as a product. Uh, cause to me, it, it's, it kind of paints a both like a cynical picture, but also a pretty funny one. <laughs> um, funny only in the sense that it is kind of, it would be a disaster. Um, so I, uh, <clears throat> so this, it started with me. I listened to an hour long interview of, uh, Zuckerberg pretty recently um, and I was really interested to hear his vision for the the metaverse and it was his idea that people would be uh, like working uh, kind of relaxing doing everything kind of in the in the guise of the metaverse which is an ideal world for somebody trying to monetize everything um, but either way that uh, the most interesting part and the part that I want to focus on was he thought it would be uh it's his vision that like companies utilize this for their like workspace so they have like digital office space almost and then um you know companies do all their regular business operations but now in a virtual location within the metaverse um so i'd assume all of everyone has goggles on and everyone's connected through some virtual Slack channel or something. I don't know. Um, and I just thought of this hilarious hypothetical. And um, I guess it's kind of sad thinking about it in the grand scheme of things, um, that that's how far society has fallen. But I imagine a small to mid-tier company that's adopted um, this kind of technology. Um, so they've, they've all got their Quest Pro 3s or whatever. Um, and they're uh, trying to really conduct... They really bought in, right? They're conducting all their business operations through the metaverse. They're having, uh, you know, board meetings and uh, happy hours, all kind of <laughs> virtually uh, with headsets on and avatars running around. Not to mention, I mean, the avatars look ridiculous. But just imagine for a second that this company is having a uh, a board meeting, right? So they have kind of these high level executives, and and not to you know not to be not to generalize here, but more often than not, um, you know, big company board or any company's board meetings are generally not like these like funny kind of quirky, um, you know, because the avatars kind of give you the sense that it's not really that serious, right? I mean, can you take anything serious that looks like a, you know, the 2005, you know, we essentially? That's what those characters like remind me of. They remind me of those um, me characters. Um, and, I, you know, you in essence, you can't. It's hard to take those serious anyway, right? They look ridiculous. Um, but you know, assuming that 
this serious company is trying to, you know, conduct serious business. Um, you know, let's say the let's say the CEO or the, the big manager is uh, gets frustrated at one of his uh, you know one of his subordinates. It's um, you know the numbers that quarter aren't up to par, right? And imagine there there's still these avatars sitting in a boardroom. Um, and, then, and then the uh, you know the CEO is you know <clears throat> in the real world he's you know at home sitting at a desk maybe with a collared shirt on with his boxers on or something. And he's got this headset on and he's you know it's kind of hit a nerve that his subordinate hasn't you know overpromised or something. And he's starting to get angry and he's, he's yelling at you know he's kind of spitting into the microphone that's attached to his. Uh, headset that's strapped onto his head um, and you know he starts just screaming and lo- unloading into this hypothetical um, subordinate um, at the, during this board meeting and you know in the virtual reality world it's this <laughs> it's this it's this poorly animated me character like you know angrily screaming <laughs> angrily screaming at another one and then you know the other guy is, is you know likewise kind of sitting in uh, you know, wearing boxers or something, uh, you know, in the living room with his wife, uh, who's also got a headset on or something. And, um, you know, just kind of has to sit there <laughs> and feel stupid while, while he gets chewed out by a, uh, <laughs> he gets chewed out by, his, you know, some old RuneScape character, you know, three digitalized and screaming at him. It's just so funny to me to imagine, Imagine, like, you know, other emotions aren't that funny, right? Uh, you know, kind of those characters being sad, you don't really buy it. You don't really feel empathy for them. But anger, to me, would be such a funny emotion to try and see, to see those characters display. Because, um, I mean, generally speaking, we're, we're very far away from uh, these digital characters embodying any sense of real emotion, right? I mean... Like, I even say that, like, 2K characters are a lot closer to showing emotion than these metaverse characters. Maybe they're, like, eye eyebrows narrow or something, but for the most part, these things are terrible at showing emotion. So the, the, visual of, <laughs> the visual of a company executive, you know, spitting and screaming into his little microphone wearing a headset, you know, at a subordinate who at any point could just, you know, take his goggles off and live in the real world it's, it's just a funny like it's a funny thought to think that that could be the future right you could be you could be so serious you could act so serious while you're wearing you know a pair of you know glorified sunglasses you know it, it's just it's funny but at the same time it, i mean if that is ever the reality that we live in where we all have virtual headsets strapped to our eyes I mean, God help us, please. I mean, that. I hope I'm not the only one that just sees that as a complete disaster in, in every way. Uh, I mean, it'd be. Why would I ever. I mean, I, there's just so many other things I want to. I could get into with that, but I'm just not going to because it's, it's ultimately all just a waste of time. Anyway, I thought the. Uh, if nothing else, the visual of, you know, some, some manager getting scree- screamed at by his boss while wearing a virtual reality headset is just a funny funny picture to paint in my my own head so and that's where my eyes went when i was thinking when i was listening to zuck talk about his all his ambitions with the uh the metaverse so i don't know whatever i think it's kind of funny yeah anyway um yeah yeah so something else i think is uh is very interesting um and is kind of the point is i I noticed that, myself included, that complaining about stuff, you often feel a lot better. And I think that partially has to do because it gives you the, you know, the false sense that you're doing something about an injustice, right? So if I complain about somebody, something that I think is wrong or something, you know, there's a fleeting but brief moment where I, you know, feel like I'm doing something about the issue, right? Which... In reality, I'm not. I'm just complaining about it. But there's a certain sense of uh, of uh, feeling like you're doing something that you get when when you complain. Um, and that's, I mean, I'm not. I hope that this series itself doesn't come across as me just complaining about stuff. But um, 
ultimately that's really what a lot of uh like conversations are between friends you know a friend kind of calls up another friend to complain about something right and then the other friend just kind of listens and then maybe likewise complains about something that they're dealing with right and in some ways that's the nature of a lot of uh modern relationships and not like romantic relationships all relationships result around you know i just need to vent about something right you probably have a friend that's told you that before um and then now due to this kind of shortage of um interaction maybe as a result of the the pandemic you have people that are maybe short on people to listen to their complaining so they uh you know seek some kind of therapy which and i don't mean to i mean i kind of am generalizing and i will uh therapy is just kind of for, a form of monetized complaining right um and it's become this huge industry where um you know you're just paying for you're not paying for a friend per se because uh, you know there's generally a lot more that goes into a friendship than that but you know a, a part of what makes you feel better around your friends is you feel like you can complain about stuff that you otherwise wouldn't uh, and the fact that enough people don't have friends that it's become this this nice market that uh, entrepreneurs are are after constantly kind of goes to show that uh, you know nothing can't be monetized right with enough demand so um, you know better help every fucking video this video is sponsored by better help you know and I'm not I'm not obviously not making fun of better help as a thing but um, I think people that want to do that and see that as a solution for their whatever problems you're dealing with is fine and again you're you're free to choose whatever solutions you want to your your problems. Um, but, you know, I, I won't say that it's not, at least in some ways, a little predatory. Because, you know, these people that are, you know, that feel like they need somebody to talk to you are generally vulnerable, right? And they're generally not, uh, you know, they kind of need somebody to, to listen and even in some cases help with whatever problem they're facing. Um, and now that that's, you know, you can get that for a small, small price of five nine nine a month. You know, doesn't it seem a little, you know, a little predatory, right? They were kind of, oh, you feel bad? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Just pay me, and then you'll feel better, you know? Um, and obviously, that <laughs> there's a couple more steps in there, you know? It's like, you know, <laughs> it's just got some extra steps. But in some ways, that's the way I see it, right? It's just, you know, we've, we've now monetized complaining, right? And then here I am, complaining about it, right? So I'm complaining about people complaining. Um, and it's just become this this nice big industry that people can, uh, you know, you can have the new way of complaining. And there's, a, you know, now it's AI-assisted complaining, right? And there's just all this, you know, needless garbage uh, that uh, is really just more ways to monetize people and, you know, trick them into giving you money for something. Which I, I'm not going to try and get too cynical into the details of that. But in some ways, that's the way I see a lot of these, like, um, you know, self-help oriented products where they're, if they're trying to sell you something, just like, I think part of, you know, some really good self-help advice would be just stop buying shit. I don't care what it is. Just stop buying it. Like, it's not going to help you, you know, right? Cause you think, oh, well, it's, that's what, that's all I need. I need a therapist. Um, and then they're, you know, they still deal with the problems. Now they just, they have a fleeting sense of feeling better now that they've complained about it to somebody and somebody else shares the burden of their problems. Um, you know, but nobody's going to solve those problems for you. And in a lot of ways, they're not, they're not meant to be solved, right? They're like, you know, what if one of your problems is it, it rained one day and now you're like, what the hell are you supposed to do about that? Nothing. Right. And, and that's kind of a stupid example, but a lot of problems that people would be complaining about, oh, my boss is mean to me or, you know, I'm too short. Like all those are, what is anyone supposed to do about that? Right. Somebody could sit there in an armchair and just kind of nod or sit there over zoom and, you know smile or whatever the fuck they do i don't even know um but you know they're not really solving any problems and i, I think <clears throat> and yeah obviously the point isn't to solve them right the point is just to, to feel a little better about your problems but does it have to involve money does it have to involve you paying somebody and does it have to be subscription based you know if they're trying to help wouldn't it be more of an as needed thing or you know i mean it, and then you know just the whole subscription oriented business architecture in a lot of ways feels predatory you know because you know people don't cancel their subscriptions to anything um and you know my solution is just don't 
don't subscribe to anything, right? Unless it's free. Even then, like you're probably giving them data of some kind, but it depends on how much you value your data and privacy, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Um, but to me, like the <laughs> the first part about the therapy industry just being, you know, and I'm not. There's obviously a lot of, of realistic. Uh, real people that need real therapy and so I'm just thinking these like large scale monetized um, therapy platforms are just maybe not exactly as altruistic as they might seem right they might have some more sinister uh, you know obviously they're making money hand over fist Um, why do you think they're paying all these YouTubers to promote it right you wouldn't be doing that if that wasn't a way into because I think what they noticed was they said oh let's see what's what's like a you know, semi-marginalized, lonely group of people. Oh, the people that watch, you know, XYZ's YouTube videos. They, you know, that's a demographic we should get into. Um, and lo and behold, they, they do. Um, you know, and I'm not saying that... I mean, right? Am I, am I, <laughs> am I that far off? Uh, you know, people that spend a lot of time watching YouTubers. Um, you know, I mean, I don't... They're not watching movies with their friends, right? Uh, they're watching YouTube by themselves. So they're the ones that might need some therapy or like, oh, yeah, have you been lonely? You know, it's like, like people are lonely. all the, I don't know. I just I see it as less of a I see it more of as a corporate uh, threat than I do like a, a genuine attempt to help people. Right. And I generally you can boil it down to kind of quickly how company how fast a company's growing. So especially a company that you never heard of, like, do you ever hear better help before? Like like last year, right? I mean, and all of a sudden, everybody and their mother, I'm sure their numbers skyrocketed, right? And a lot of that is just to get a shit ton of users on the platform, get a shit ton of money, and they're just going to continue to do that, right? But I think if the the real goal was to, you know, to really help people and help people well, it would be a more sustainable, like, slower growth model. You wouldn't have, it would have kind of crept on. You, They wouldn't have all of a sudden dumped you know, three million dollars into paying YouTubers to promote their product, it would have been much more gradual because they were focusing on okay, can we handle five xing our client base? You know, and the other thing is, I think that kind of lends itself to being who are you hiring as therapists if you have that many people, right? It's not these people all have PhDs or master's degrees and years of experience. I mean, could I sign up as a therapist? I could sit there and listen to people and get paid for it, and I'm sure they have to like, oh, you have to. Someone's got to, I'll just go make a fake certificate online and print it out and then scan it and send it in and I could be a therapist, right? It's like, if that's, you know, I'm curious to see what level of scrutiny they would apply to, um, you know, their therapist. Simply because they're just moving so quickly, right? You have to sacrifice something if you're going to grow something, a business that quickly. So, I don't know. That's just something I want to get off my chest and I feel better now but I feel like I've done something about that problem now that I've said it said it out loud um I realize I'm saying that in like a way that's snarky but I in a lot of ways that's that is kind of how it how it works um so anyway so yeah um along that same vein uh is it a choice to be happy is it a conscious choice you can make right um i think some people just uh well i guess the reason i reason i got this idea was uh i was watching i didn't i don't know if i was watching a video i don't even know where i got this from i just wrote it down um they surveyed like these old men dying uh on their deathbed and what they regret like regretted in their life so they're kind of life life's regrets um, and one of them, the one that was at least most kind of uh, apparent to me that was interesting, was they said they wish uh, they let themselves be happier. They realized that happiness was a choice. So I thought it would be interesting to kind of decide whether or not, not really decide, but kind of, you know, extrapolate whether or not that being happy was a choice. My very simple logic against this, um, which I'll try to see if it holds up to scrutiny, if it were... A choice, um, and granted, I guess if it were an easy choice, more people would do it, right? Um, so, like, 
the very knee-jerk reaction is like, well, no, it's not. Like, otherwise, I would just, oh, I'm just going to wake up today and be in a great mood. Um, if you're able to do that, like, you know, create a business and sell it. No, I, I, it, it just seems a little, uh, you know, too simple. It's like, oh, well, it is simple. Just be happy. Like, what the fuck does that mean, right? What is happiness? What, you know, and you can get all, like, all over the place with this. So I'm not going to go too into detail, but for the most part, if it was that fucking easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So that's, that's the whole rule of thumb. Like, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It applies here, too, right? If it sounds like, oh, just wake up and smile, and all of a sudden, all your problems go away. I think biologically, we have a an interest in um, focusing on uh, immediate threats, and generally just focusing on negative things because that is what has helped us survive so long as a species. So I don't think it our biology has quite adapted to our lifestyle, right? I think our evolution as a society was much faster than our biological evolution. Biological evolution happens really, really slow. And so I think um, we've benefited in the long term from seeing things as negative and seeing threats um so it makes sense that when someone's like oh just be happy and you'll be happy it's like you know where's the snake that's gonna bite me and kill me or something essentially um i realize it's not that kind of cut and dry but that's also another component of my argument is that i i would think that it serves a purpose biologically to be kind of like critical and be negative in a way, um, and it's much different, you know. That uh, so maybe the key to it is try to separate your your biological instinct from a social pressure, right? Because at the same time that there's a maybe a biological biological instinct to be happy, there's a social pressure or a biological instinct to be unhappy and seek like being better or something self-improvement or whatever it is there's also some social pressure in uh in being happy so it's but again easier said than done i think your biological impulses generally are pretty pretty strong right it's like if it were that easy to be happy it'd be just as easy just to to not be hungry right it's like that's also a, a kind of a biologically controlled factor right it's like a hormone called ghrelin that you secrete or that you release when you're hungry so it's like oh just like wake up and not be hungry and then you won't be hungry it's like what i like okay all right i mean how is that supposed to work um so it's kind of the same way and and i'm not saying happiness is 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 synonymous with hunger and so i'm not drawing a direct correlation i'm just saying there's some similarities between the i'm drawing the biological similarities between them which would uh indicate that it's not so simple um, and if it truly is that easy for someone to be happy, I like I I wish it was I, I don't know I, I can't do it. So either I'm incapable or it's just not that easy for some people. So um, that's at least the way I see it. So I don't at, at at surface level I don't really think it's a choice. Um, you know that being said, I think people that claim to have like zero control or to be they're just perpetually miserable at everything and they have no control and they've kind of had this defeated mindset and i think in a lot of ways you can say oh it's biological too it's just natural i I think we have a certain in the same way you can like you can still be hungry and not eat you can still like uh biologically feel sad or unfulfilled or whatever and be happy right um so you know i feel like if people say it as something that's oh it's uncontrollable there's no way for me to be happy you can think of it like hunger right you kind of you can know that okay i'm hungry right now i should i should either eat or i'm gonna resist it and i'm just not gonna eat uh that's like one response in the same way it'd be like oh i'm i'm sad right now i'm just gonna resist it and you know smile or something i don't know maybe it's like this fatigue of trying to you know it's like fasting or something a fatigue of trying not to eat um you know is obviously not easy so it's um you know it's the same thing you can't just wake up and not be hungry but it it could be thought of in in very similar ways so i i I argue against both sides in the sense that it's like oh just wake up and smile and you'll be happy um as well as like 
just like uh, you know, you're doomed to be sad about everything all the time, right? There's, um, you know, as is most things, there's a middle ground where you can you can exert as much control as you can over it, and then the rest is up to the rest. So it's, I don't know. Either way, it's not worth really letting it control any your whole entire life. So just like you can still do things when you're hungry, um, I would hope you can still do things if you're not happy, right? Um, and, you know, I suppose it's, I don't know, I, it really, really kind of depends <laughs> on the person, I guess, but that's, that's just the way I see it, um, in terms of happiness being like a direct choice in some way, so, I don't know, maybe that, maybe that makes sense, maybe that doesn't, but, whatever, whatever, um, I want to tell you about my favorite adjective these days, I don't know, really, really sure if it's an adjective, there's probably a better literary word for it but it's just something that i think is awesome and we should uh keep using it as a society um <laughs> that's like the the term uh like dunking on people all right so like i've heard i've heard it now more recently like oh such and such is getting dunked on right so the metaverse is getting dunked on the metaverse is getting dunked on uh to me the getting dunked the act of getting dunked on is just so funny to me because i i just envision you know like Andre Drummond or something some huge NBA player just absolutely slamming the ball like with an insane ferocity you know right you know over Mark Zuckerberg or something he's just kind of standing under the rim his little pathetic build um or a stupid little me character under the rim and then he's just getting absolutely dunked on so kind of paints a funny picture to me so I uh I enjoy hearing when somebody says that they're uh, such and such is getting dunked on because it uh, just paints a funny picture in my head and it's it's funny. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's one of that's a, a favorite adjective of mine right now. That's all I have for that aside. By the way, I'm not going to go on for 20 minutes about what it means to dunk on somebody. I just think it's funny. So whatever. Uh, the next thing, sorry, I was drinking water. The next thing I'm going to talk about is like, uh, is my general disdain and misuse of, or non-use of clickbait. So I, you know, I, you might look at my, uh, all my videos and their, their thumbnails and their titles and just think that I'm like, oh, this guy's just a dumb YouTuber. He doesn't know that you could, you know, if you made a more compelling thumbnail and a better title, you would get more clicks, right? That's a pretty, it's a very linear relationship. It's quite easy. Um, but I'm actually doing it on purpose out of a, a matter of principle. Um, I don't like where, uh, I guess, the world has gone. I mean, I'm not, obviously not asking for like this. Oh, everyone should just, everyone should have a black background as their thumbnail and like no title or something. Or I mean, I don't even know how else you even do it. So it's not even that I'm saying that it's like wrong or it's unfair. To me, it's just I value the uh, I value the authenticity of creation and the the value of art, I guess, for lack of a better word. And the use of some you know misnomer thumbnail thumbnail or a title that has nothing to do with the video um, and has just a bunch of buzzwords in it, or you know. Dream is gay. Oh, Dream and Elon Musk are having an effect. Like, you can just make up any of these dumbass titles, and some idiot's going to click on it. Um, you know, I take a hot button topic right now and I put the mega meta logo with Elon Musk or something. And Dream, I mean, you could just throw every little pop culture reference into the thumbnail, and I'm going to get way more clicks. That's just, it's statistics, obviously. I get a ton of people watching, and you know, I might even blow up or something. But to me, you know, then I have this whole audience that might think I'm some, you know, audience of nine-year-olds that think I'm some person that's going to dunk on Elon Musk all the time or whatever. Or, you know, you just get viewers that aren't really authentic to your content. And while no one really watches these videos, except for a few of my friends, I still value the fact that the videos are truly authentic, right? I don't, you know, the titles I, I try to make reasonable enough about the video, um, they're generally not holistic especially like these hour-long videos how am i supposed to make a title that is some is summative of the entire video so i'm going to pick 
a compelling topic that I talked about at one point. And I'm gonna name I'm gonna name it in the same scheme as I do the rest of my videos. So that way you know exactly what it is, right? I'm not trying to trick you into clicking on it. Um, I want you to click on it because you want to watch it. Um, and to me, that, that means the people that click on the video and the, the ones that watch it are like true viewers, right? They're not just people that you tricked into clicking on your video. Um, so I guess for me, it really just boils down to a, a level of authenticity, a standard of authenticity that I hold myself to, even if it doesn't, if it's not in my best interest as a content creator, I guess, if you're going to call me that. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't, and I don't, I don't hate people to do clickbait. Um, you know, at one point I, I might even just see if I can even try and clickbait, see if it even works. Cause you know, I sit here and say that, Oh, I could clickbait and it would work. I'm not even sure if it could. So maybe I do a video where I try and clickbait, but I just, it's, I have such a, I have taken such a position against it just on a principle level that I, I would be, you know, I'd be hypocritical if I ran around clickbaiting everything because it's, I don't, I hate it. I don't like that as a. A means of advertising, right? And I generally am not super keen on any kind of advertising. I don't like being sold on stuff. That's just kind of my my mo. I like purchasing things at all if I want it and need it, and am very aware of what it is. I don't want to be sold some snake oil because it, you know, it had tricky advertising or something. Um, so I'm very wary of of how things are sold and things being sold whatever so i clickbait to me falls in that same category where i'm just kind of whatever they think i'm whatever they think i'm just going to convince them that my product or my video is going to do something it's not where it's you know it's, be, it's not being authentic right and i kind of value authenticity to a fault so i would rather just no one watch it um then ten thousand people click on it and everyone hates it right um, or I get people that I just don't want listening to my videos, right? Um, you know, if I had this army of like eight-year-olds listening to my videos, you know, God save us. I mean, why would you want that? Uh, you know, you know, some, you know, teenage cynic. I'm not even teenage. I'm in my 20s. Uh, some cynic up here playing Minecraft and talking about this, that, and the other to a bunch of eight-year-olds who... You know, can't even comprehend half the shit I'm talking about. I'm not even sure what my audience is, honestly. Like, my ideal audience, I, I suppose it's it's over 18, I guess. I guess I guess 15, 16 year olds would get something out of it too. But for the most part, uh, you know, people out of childhood, right? Maybe into their teens and their middle age years. Uh, I would rather have them watching my videos than anyone else, right? I don't, you know, and Minecraft's obviously a game that you know, is uh, much more for, for the child audience, right? But, you know, are you really surprised that everyone that, all those Minecraft YouTubers that have those thumbnails for kids are, are pedophiles? Like, how much that is re really surprises you, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, they're freaking weirdos. Who else would, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I, that's totally being uh, reductive of people that, well, might, some of them might be nice, but there's just way too many, right, in this, like, the Minecraft community that uh, sells to these younger kids. So, and and, and to me, I'm not saying it's a, it's a direct result of clickbait. I'm saying these people probably gain an audience through misrepresenting their content and themselves between who they, who they truly are, right? They put on this online persona of this, like, super bubbly, like, you know, person who loves Minecraft and, you know, and it turns out they're, you know, they're a pedophile. You know, I don't ever at any point want to come across as inauthentic. I'm exactly, if you met me at Burger King or something, not that I would ever go to Burger King, but if you ran into me at Burger King and uh, whatever, and then you watch my videos later, you wouldn't be like, there's no way it's the same guy. You'd be like, all right, this is pretty much the same dude, right? It's like, you know, maybe I'm, maybe if I'm like, you know, getting interviewed on TV, I'm not going to be this like super dry, cynical person. I might, you know, say try to say something a little more positive. Um, but for the most part, you're going to see the, pretty much the same person, right? It's not going to be this, oh my God, it turns out he, you know, hated Minecraft all along. It's like, no, I, I'm, I want, I desire to be as authentic in person as I am in my online persona. And I think clickbait is just a symptom of people, 
um, you know, getting very comfortable misrepresenting themselves online in whatever way that might be, right? And especially misrepresenting their content, right? You see all these, you know, Dream had a sexual affair with Elon Musk, what? Um, and bought all Tesla stock or something. You know, it's like, what the, f you're not even, this is nothing, like, it's clear. You know, anyone with a brain knows that that's the dumbest thing ever. But for some reason, you know, your monkey brain, in you know the the world has likened people to just click on that stuff, uh, and it's not even that like I'm like fighting. Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure if there's a better solution to that. But at the same time, it's not something I want for myself. It's nothing I want for my content. So my stuff will be will continue to be bland. It'll be uh, titled and ordered the same way, and it it's not it, the person that's going to be talking behind the microphone will be the same person you'll run into online. Um, you know, with relatively little adjustments. It's not like I'm going to be something totally different. And that's just the standard I want to hold myself to and my, and everything, oh, excuse me, that I associate myself with. So, I don't know. That, that's just kind of where I fall on that. So, I, yeah, I do hate clickbait because um, I really value my own authenticity and the way I'm coming across. But at the same time, I'm not really sure if there's a, there's not really a great way of, like, avoiding that, right? Because you can't just, like, Oh, if your content isn't exactly representative and minimalist to your the content of your video, um, therefore your you know your your video will be banned or something. There's not really a way that you can like technologically like get around people clickbaiting. That's just it's just going to be what they're going to do because you know you know they're going to break it on either end of the spectrum, I guess. Uh, no matter what you do about trying to moderate clickbait, so. Um, I don't know. I just don't want it for myself. So I suppose I think that's a, a good thing for um, for people to live by. I, I, don't, I think, like, yeah, it's one thing to operate in the bounds of the law. Like, yes, I understand that's like a... But you, like, you're... Oftentimes, the what's legal and what's, like, what's right are very, very different things. So I think people that, oh, well, it's legal, right? Like, doesn't mean it's, like, the right thing to do, Right. It's technically legal to run around and just insult people, right? And to, like, I don't know. There's a whole, all kinds of stuff. That's, I'm not even going to get into more examples because I'm probably going to get my account suspended or something. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff that's legal and that is, like, maybe just frowned upon, right? Um, and just because it's allowed or permitted by the law or by a platform... Um, you know, just because you're allowed to put whatever you want in the thumbnail on the title, um, it doesn't really mean that you should, because again, it's, you kind of know that you're being misleading. Um, but at the same time, you can't, you should, I don't, I think people should hold themselves to higher standards, right? Which I realize is a tall order, right? Most people do not hold them, do not have higher standards for themselves than society does of them. That's why we have like people that break a bunch of laws, right? Because they're, Personal morals fall below the threshold of what the society is considered legal. Um, and so those people, you know, are in jail. And whether their value system is different, right? Um, yeah, that's one discussion to be had. But for the most part, they, um, you know, operated beyond the, uh, the level which we deemed acceptable as a society. So in the same way, if, like, people, platformers, people on the platform of YouTube hold themselves only to the lowest possible standard of what YouTube says, this is okay, doesn't really mean it's what you should be doing. Um, you know, just because it's okay to be misleading and lie in the thumbnail and to kind of artificially conflate what your content is versus what your thumbnail says in your title um, and, like, metadata, like, hashtag hacking and, like, throwing a thousand things in there that have nothing to do with it. Like, just because it's allowed doesn't really mean it's right. But, again, I'm kind of asking for the moon here because people are generally just going to if they have a product or a feature or something they're just going to break it like that's the you have to kind of make that assumption as someone that develops a product right that whoever is just going to try and ruin whatever it is that you just made so like you have to place enough flexibility for them to operate and you're in the kind of the laws of that universe um you know, with the intent, with the knowledge that somebody's going to push it to the very, very edge. So, I think it's just—I just think it's unfortunate that it's now the commonplace, and most people are at the very, very edge of that. 
And there's not too many YouTubers that still kind of operate on their own um, value system of, um, you know, naming and titling and thumbnailing videos uh, honest to their their content. But I don't know. It's it's still an, it's it's an interesting um, interesting topic. I think at least from a like a I guess a product developer's like a mindset. Um, and but again, I'm not really sure if there's like a you know, I'm not fighting for some kind of justice. I just think it's, uh, it's something for me to complain about, right? And I talked about the value of complaining and <laughs> complaining about things. So I'm complaining about people that clickbait all the time because it's annoying. Um, and, uh, yeah, I fall for it. But, like, it's hard not to, you know, because there's a chance that the content they're promoting is what they say it is. And so in order to find out, you have to click on it, Um but if it, in the high probability it turns out to be BS, you still clicked on the video and you can't take away a view, right? You, you're kind of stuck. So, I don't know. That's kind of annoying. But anyway, um, yeah, I hate clickbait. Clickbait's stupid. So if you clickbait, screw you. Um, that being said, I might, <laughs> I might see if, I might see if like, clickbaiting actually works. I like, I don't know. Maybe at some point, if I feel ballsy enough, I'll just make a regular let's play video, and then instead of click, instead of like titling it like I normally would for like a week, I'll just title it something absolutely absurd and ridiculous, and uh, I'll see what it does. And I'll make a ridiculous thumbnail because I can, I can make ridiculous thumbnails. Um, you know, it's not that hard to just emulate what other people are doing with their thumbnails, and it'll work, right? I'll just make it like a Mr. Beast thumbnail and title video, and I promise you to get like 10,000 views. Um, that's just, it's just a principally a wrong thing for me. To, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't sleep well at night doing that kind of thing, which I know some people doesn't even, they don't even blink, they don't even care. Um, you know, it's no matter to them whether or not they deceived people, but um, I guess I'm on that higher moral, <laughs> that higher moral ground. Allow me to impose my moral standards on everyone else. No, that's uh, that's just as bad too. Is feeling like I'm better because I don't do that. It's just a choice that I've made, and I just I don't know. I feel better about myself when I do that when I don't clickbait. But people that don't care, I, it's not my job to tell them they're stupid. I just I can think they're stupid. I just they don't have to respond or believe or even listen to me. They don't care, um, and that's totally valid too. I'm not saying that these. I have to force them to do anything, right? It's just, it's my opinion that they're stupid. So, or that they're not stupid. They're just, they're smart for doing it, but they're stupid because their standards are too low or something. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, moving on. Um, next, I want to talk about the possibility of anyone becoming evil, right? Like, do you, do we think that, uh, I guess it, really boils down to like the nature versus nurture debate right do you think people are born evil or become evil um i think generally the consensus is that uh nobody nobody's inherently born evil and i think especially with uh you know there's plenty of examples you can point to people kind of becoming evil right they weren't originally that way but um a collection of unfortunate events and you know lack of oversight by somebody or something that ultimately led to someone becoming someone they originally weren't or didn't have to be. Right? I think um, I think that's certainly the, the case, the people that do become evil. But my question is more on the side of um, people that are otherwise not evil. Um, you know, is it possible that in, in, any, in any circumstances they could be evil, right? Is there anyone, do I think there's anyone that exists that couldn't, under the right circumstances, become you know, the equivalent of Hitler, right? Um, and I hate that I keep having to use that as a sample, but it it just fits. Everyone knows what it is. It's like, you know, it's the easy, like, far end of the spectrum. You just say Hitler, and everyone goes, oh, my God, Hitler. Um, you know, so it's easy to use that as an example, so that's why I do it. But um, I, I would say yes. I think anyone under the right circumstances of bad things can become the... You know, more or less the equivalent of, of a of a Hitler, I guess. Um, let me take a drink of water here. It's really tough for me to defend this too with a uh, with any like concrete 
uh, logic or proof because like how am I supposed to right um, but I, I truly believe um, you know I guess anecdotally or just with my with my knowledge of how the world can really beat people up um, and it's not that it's like I'm asking for all suffering to end I think it's it's kind of the that's kind of the interest of it you know it's you know I'm not saying it's fun to go through life struggles but it's challenging and we get a sense of fulfillment from um, you know conquering challenges so it's you know in some ways that's kind of the point of it all is to think you can't do something and overcome it but on the other side of that and those that really feed into some alter ego or a persona that's negative or you know bad or whatever I don't whatever how you want to describe it um, is there an alternate reality where everyone's bad everyone could be bad in, in their own their own super villain in their story right um, I certainly think there can right there's really n- nothing there's no level of what level of, there's no threshold in which the world can't take everything away from you right it's not like you're not protected right by anyone you could theoretically lose with no exaggeration everything um and some people have some people really they really do lose everything um and yeah it's one thing to just be you know i feel bad for him but that's no excuse for being evil you know if you if you really can't see a way that every person regardless of backstory or whatever you don't ever if you don't see a path in which they could become evil i think you know, I encourage you to think harder, <laughs> for lack of a better word, because I, uh, or for lack of a better wording, because it, I, it, it truly, it truly just makes sense. I, I really think there's not, again, yeah, there's nothing that the world can't take away from you. So everything that you value, or uh, everything you love, everything that, you know, gets you up at, in the morning, and everything that keeps you doing good things, it keeps your glue together you know, could be taken away by somebody or something, whether inside your control or outside your control, right? The, you know, the equi- you know, God could come down and strike down your entire family, fire you from your job, make you homeless, destroy everything you've ever, you know, known to enjoy and give you a perfect opportunity to revenge against the entire world. And under the right circumstances, I think everybody would, would take that take that metaphorical gun that God is giving you after after taking everything from you, right? Um, you'd have one chance to redeem it all and right all the wrongs that have been against you or whatever in the world. And yeah, it's, obvious, it's easy to think that you're the superhero. You wouldn't do that. No, you're a great person. Um, but I think it's also narrow-minded to think that there's not at least some possibility that you would. You would, you know, if God was giving you that gun after taking everything, that you would take it. So... Um, yeah, I absolutely think everyone could become evil, um, you know, in their own ways. Everyone's got their own, um, their own psychology and philosophy on things. So I'm sure some people are much easier to be evil. They just take a little push. Other people might have to have more dramatic measures, right? So kind of the equivalent of losing everything, really. Some people really don't have to lose that much just to become evil, right? They, you know, they, you know, leave a bag of chips open and they're stale. And next thing you know, they're like, you know, the worst person on ever, you know, some people really didn't take much, which is kind of sad, but, um, there's many more people that, that require a lot more of a push. So if you're anyone that thinks that you're just incapable of being evil in any way ever, no matter what, um, I think you're an idiot. You know, again, I'm entitled to my opinion. So are yours. I think you're an idiot. Um, so yeah, I absolutely think that, um, uh, anyone can become evil. So some people are probably closer and farther than others, but that's not the question. The question is, could you become evil under the right circumstances? So I say yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's pretty short. I don't really have much other discussion because this is just one thing I keep, I'm having trouble arguing with myself over. So even if I try to go in the other direction, I still kind of fall back on like the, yeah, duh kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, let's see, what else do I have on here? Yeah, I suppose that, that's kind of one other thing I see as the, uh, it's like a great equalizer, right? 
Um, so it doesn't really make as much sense to me that people like think they're better or worse than people. Like we tend to, I talked about this before, but they like associate like these people who are successful or wealthy or strong or fast or whatever with like this innate sense of like, oh, they're better than me. Um, you know, so someone that is a multi-billionaire, you're like, but he's a billionaire. Like, yeah, but he's a billionaire. He must be really smart. Like, I'm going to listen to him. Um, I think generally that that credit is misguided. Um, I don't, I don't, like, again, this is my philosophy on it, which is, that's what I'm doing in these videos is sharing my philosophy. I don't give, I don't care at all. I give zero fucks about how much money someone's made in their career. Because that, to me, is no indication of their brilliance. They could be brilliant. Now, the likelihood of them being brilliant is probably higher than if they were homeless. I will admit, yes, the probability, right? But I'm not, you don't, you don't operate on zero one spectrums. Just because they're smart, or just because they made a gajillion dollars does not mean they're smart. Um, and just because they're broke, or you make more money than them, or they're stupid, or their girlfriend's ugly, or whatever other excuse you want to attribute to them, does not mean that they are any less worthy of your credit or respect, or of your disdain, right? So there's people that are otherwise super wealthy and have all this stuff and have, you know, hot girlfriend, all this, all this crap. I have no respect for them. I think they suck, whatever. I don't care how much I could have quadruple their money. Give them 10 times the money they have. I don't, I still don't respect them. I don't care. Um, and it's really, it's independent of any metric. Um, it's my own judgment and it shouldn't be like this, um, you know, monetary thing. So in that way, it's kind of like this hippie take where I'm like, you know, bro, we're not that different, right? You know, um, you know, as being that I'm not, you know, I, I'm just as likely to give respect, you know, under the right, the right exposure to give respect to a homeless person than a billionaire. Um, you know, we're not that different. Everyone, you know, love everyone, bro. That's not really what I'm saying either. Um, I'm obviously saying that there's, there's a distribution, right? If it's, if the guy is homeless, I'm not going to immediately assume that he's like this Nobel prize winner. But at the same time, I'm not going to assume that, you know, assume that he's worth worth what he looks like, right? In the same way that I'm not going to see a billionaire or see some celebrity and assume he's what he looks like, right? You look at him, you go, oh, I assume this guy's filthy rich. He must be smart. He must have made smart decisions. He must have really, you know, great leadership ability, whatever, right? And you just kind of associate like, oh, this person must be great because they've done all these great things. I don't. I think we're all like a coin slip away from anything good or bad, right? I, I really, I really think that there's not that much separating, you know, the McDonald. I mean, okay, there's probably a little more separating the McDonald's worker from the CEO, but like the average tech worker with the CEO, um, you know, there's and by extension, there's not, there's not, there's not as much separating the homeless person from the billionaire than society might suggest there to be. Suggest that like. You know, people are, and I, I see it more on the the other end. I think people have now like, have given a certain amount more credibility to people that are homeless or don't have a shit ton of money or whatever. People have given them a little more respect. I think it happens more often that people give too much respect mm. to people that have done well, right? So somebody has made a gajillion dollars in their life, and all of a sudden, they're this person's so smart. Everything they say is, I should just do everything they say because they're just so mm -hmm. smart. They could just be lucky, you know. They could have an uncle or something. You have no idea how they got there. They could lie. They could. You could do anything. I'm. I'm not going to take anyone's word for it on what, how they did what they did, and that there's some genius just because they made it. Like that's the epitome of survivorship bias. And I really think that he was. Ju he's just as close to being. You know, if he was born in a different country, to a different mother, to a different family, the person might be worth shit. Um. So I, yeah, I think if I, you know. And it's in some alternate reality where I was born to, you know, an African family instead of an American one. Am I still going to be a Julianaire or whatever, right? Like, maybe, but like, is it a given? No, I don't think anyone's as brilliant or as stupid as they might make themselves out to be. So it's kind of both ends of the spectrum. I think people are not giving enough credit to people who aren't, you know, at least materially wealthy, and then people are giving way too much credit to people that are materially wealthy, as if they've they deserve all of it, right? Not to say they don't deserve some of it, or they don't deserve nothing. I'm not advocating for some communist commune, 
where you know, no one deserves everything, everyone's equal. People are not equal inherently. People are very, very not equal. Um, I'm just saying the distribution is not directly correlated with how much money you've made in your career. There's people that are brilliant that have actually consciously chosen not to make a shit ton of money. They have all the skills they could. They could have made a gajillion dollars, you know, hacking or scamming people or do something. But they're like, you know, I don't want it. I don't care that much. And to me, that that's a lot more virtuous and more... I look up to that a lot more than someone who saw a great business opportunity and made a made a therapy business or something. You know, I obviously don't. I uh, have a beef with some therapy businesses, namely the ones that are just not really prioritizing the customer experience. Um, you know, notice I use customer there. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I'll uh, see you guys next time. Peace out.